Hey guys, so this video is going to be my attempt at a beginner's guide to Dokkan Battle. Now, I am recording this video during the global five-year anniversary celebration. Specifically, this video is being recorded on July 11th, 2020. So if you're somebody who's seeing this video a little bit down the road, just keep in mind that things might have changed. I'm going to be talking about a lot of topics in this video. Um, they always are making changes and updates to this game, so... If some things don't apply in the future, please understand that this is something I just out of my control at the time of recording this video. But, um... Let's go ahead and jump right in. There's a bunch of stuff I want to talk about. I'm not going to go into super, you know, in-depth uh, discussions about every possible thing in this game, just because this is meant for the, like people who are just starting the game, uh, or people who are, you know, migrating over from other games. I know a lot of Legends players are starting to play this game, just because there's a lot more to do in this game than Legends is right now, unfortunately. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into our first topic. Okay, so the first sort of topic I want to discuss here is basically what should you be doing as a new player uh, in order to best orient your account and position yourself in the best possible way to, um, you know, advance through the game and give yourself the best chance to, I don't know, progress your account. And before we even get into talking about any gameplay mechanics, how to even play the game, what anything means, the game mode, stuff like that, I think it's important to tackle the concept of re-rolling. Uh, your account. And what re-rolling means is you basically recreate your account multiple times uh, until you obtain the characters that you want or who you're comfortable uh, using to start out your account with because that's going to be your foundation. So what I mean by that is we go over here to the summon screen and now the way you obtain characters in this game is through a feature called summoning and you use a currency called dragon stones which you can see up here I have 358 dragon stones currently. Um, you use those to perform summons on these banners, and each character, you can see the characters that are on the banner here. Now, these are the featured characters, which means they're easier to pull than every other character that's not on the featured list. Um, you can obtain these characters from these banners, but it's all, um, it's a percent chance to do that, so it's not guaranteed. Uh, it's all based off of a probability, uh, uh, basically a percent chance to pull each character. So when you start the game initially, you're going to obtain a certain set amount of Dragonstones depending on the current uh, celebrations and campaigns that are going on. Now, obviously during this fifth five-year anniversary celebration, you're going to be getting tons of stones just for logging in. Um, so upon initial login, you're going to have enough stones to perform a multi-summon. So what I recommend people do, if you have the patience for this, because this isn't, um, you know, this isn't something that's going to take you a few minutes to do. This might take hours to do. If you really want to give yourself the boost, um, well, the best possible chance to, you know, have a good account just off the bat, you might as well just keep creating new accounts and summoning on this banner um, until you get one of, like, the top tier units. And, like, this Gogeta is really, really good. Uh, all these uh, characters that you see on the top left that says Dokkan Fest Exclusive, those are all generally pretty good. Um, and on the bottom, you can see them Dokkan Awakening, which means that they're going to get more powerful once you get medals to um, get them more powered up, and they they basically tr uh, turn into a different character. Uh, but this Gogeta, right, he goes all the way up to this character. See how this says LR right here? And this one all the way in the right just says UR. Generally, LR characters are more powerful. So what my recommendation is for players who are just starting their new accounts, you want to re-roll until you get um, one of these LR characters because those are going to give your account a big boost and it's going to help you out a lot, make everything a lot easier. Same thing on this uh, Vegito banner down here. See Vegito, he can awaken into an LR here. And uh, Gohan, he can awaken into an LR here. And then same thing with this guy. So this is something that I would say you should be doing first. But if you don't want to have to deal with that, because again, this is going to take you quite a few amount of tries to get this going because they're not easy to pull. Um, you can always just start, and what I recommend doing is going over here to the start menu and going to the quest mode. Now, the quest mode is probably the best way to actually obtain Dragonstones. And like I just said earlier, Dragonstones are the currency that you use to summon in the on those banners. So the way to get new characters is you need to get Dragonstones. So basically doing the quest mode equates to you having better chances of obtaining those powerful characters. So... Taking a look at all the quest mode stages we have here, I mean, these are just areas. These aren't even the stages. So we click until, I don't know, area one, and look how many stages there are. There's three difficulties of each stage. So let's click into this. There's three stages. Each time you clear one of these for the first time, you get one Dragonstone. So this is three, six, nine, 12, 15. So for clearing just the area one down here, you're gonna get 15 Dragonstones. And in, in addition to just clearing the stages, you're gonna be doing missions. Now I've already cleared the missions, but 
Uh, this is the missions tab where you'll see basically which missions are left. There's going to be missions to do certain things. Maybe it's like clear this stage one time or clear this stage uh, while fulfilling certain conditions. You know, use this character, clear this stage, stuff like that. So my recommendation, if you're just brand new to the game, let's say you've rolled your account and you have a new character that you want to make your uh, first, you know, main team around that character. I would say once you have that done, check the missions tab, go into the special missions tab and then see what they're asking you to do. And I would say start doing stuff over there or go even go into the King Kai missions tab or go into the Corrin missions tab or go into the Kami missions tab and just look and see what they want you to do. And if it's something that seems feasible for your account to be doing, go ahead and try doing that. But I think the quest mode is really where you should be starting off, uh, where you're going to be farming all your dragon stones and stuff like that. It's also going to help you level up. It says you have, right now during the uh, fifth anniversary, you have four times rank XP. So that's really going to help you out a lot. Uh, rank is basically uh, what dictates how you can do certain things in the game. Some things unlock once you get to a higher rank. Uh, rank also gives you stuff such as more stamina, more team costs, which we'll go over later. But uh, yeah, quest mode is where you want to really focus a lot of your efforts on earlier on in your account's lifespan. So that's quest mode. Something else you can do is we go back to the main menu. We go into the events tab and there's a bunch of different things here you can do here. I wouldn't worry about this when you're just starting out. Don't worry about this tab. Challenge mode, we'll get to that later. Uh, growth is interesting because growth, um, there's things that you can do here every day. There's events such as this Weiss event, which obviously it says on there once per day, right? So we go back to this once per day. Uh, that's something you definitely want to be, make sure you're doing once a day. Same thing with this potential system. We'll get to this potential system later, but these are all once a day stages as well. It says remaining one time. And then we come down here, and this is once every seven days. This is once a day as well, this training item stage. So, and then the Steny stage as well. All these events here, most of them, uh, are limited to once a day, once a week, stuff like that. So I would recommend, um, the, if you're playing this game, I would say try and make sure you're doing these every single day because it'll help your account out a lot. Uh, but now we're going to get to the story mode over here. So story modes you can actually obtain characters via the story modes here so we go and take a look this i button is going to open up a menu where you can see the details of each story mode and you can take a look at the stages in, specific, in specificity down here so this one is going to give you two characters for free you get a broly kid and a vegeta kid just for doing uh these stages now they're obviously random drops here it says there's a chance to recruit uh broly in stage one and a chance to recruit vegeta in stage two so Upon clearing the stage, you're going to uh, have a chance to obtain one or multiple copies of these units. So that's going to help you out a lot if you're a new player. You really don't have access to many units other than what you can obtain via these story stages. Same thing with this one. I mean, you're going to get a Zamasu card for free. And then, uh, there's medals you can use to Dokkan awaken him to a stronger version. Because look, he drops as this character and then use the medals and he's going to awaken, like it says here, into this character. So a more powerful version. Um, and then there's other missions, stages, stuff like that. You can do it down here as well. So, uh, I mean, there's a lot going on, right? Fifth anniversary has a lot of stuff to do. So one other thing of advice I could say to everybody is try not to get overwhelmed. Um, and the eventual, uh, I guess, progression is once you have been able to build a, a decent team for your account, you're going to want to take that team into this challenge this challenge tab, and you're going to want to challenge these Dokkan events. Now, I showed you this earlier, this banner, right? So this Gogeta, for example, he starts out as this form, and then he Dokkan awakens into this form, and then after that he Dokkan awakens into this form. Well, there's a way that you have to go about actually being able to transform him from this into this, and then from this into this. And if you notice, it says Dokkan awaken. How do you Dokkan awaken somebody? Well, uh, there is in the event tab, we go back to the challenge and we go into this one. So let's take a look at what it says. Um, there's different stages and the way you actually Dokkan Awaken a character is you have to use these medals. So I can actually go into my team right here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let's look at this Gogeta for example. We go into his growth tab up here and uh, we go into... Actually, Awaken is not going to work because I've already done it, but we take a look at this medal, right? This medal is how you Dokkan Awaken a character, and you need 35 medals to Dokkan Awaken him into the first step after the base form, and then you need another 35 medals to Dokkan Awaken him again after that into the second step in addition to other resources as well. 
So the way you obtain these medals is you need to do this Dokkan event. So we go over here to this event, and it's not easy. So, well, it's, it's not easy for new players. So that's why I'm saying, you know, maybe you start your new account with this base form of Gogeta that you just pull from the banner. And then maybe with that, you can build your account around this character. Maybe you farm some free-to-play characters from story events, which I just showed you. And that's really what I would say is one of the better ways to go about um, building your account. Because the first major step towards having like a decent uh, level account is you want to Dokkan Awaken these high power level units. And then that's going to help you basically carry your team through those hard events. So that's basically what you're doing. And then after you've had a, you know, a good amount of time awakening your characters and you have a pretty good team of basically a full awakened team, all your characters are awakened. Uh, they're in good. They're in a good, uh, good, basically a good position to just kill everything. Then we go down into these super challenging stages with like Infinite Dragon Ball history, and then we have Fighting Legend Goku and something like super, like Super Battle Road down here. These are really the quote unquote end game content of this game. Uh, there is no PvP in this game. This is mostly just a single player game with very limited uh, features that require you interact with other players. But when you're talking about end game content in Dokkan, this is what we're talking about. Super Battle Road, uh, we're talking about uh, Fighting Legend Goku, and we're talking about Infinite Dragon Ball history. So that's ultimately what you're building up your account towards. So keep that in mind. And uh, finally, I sort of mentioned this earlier, but the way you grind resources in this game, um, basically all through this growth tab. So training items, you need training items in order to train your character up to uh, higher levels. Make sure you're doing this uh, Master Roshi event every single day, Turtle, tra Turtle School Training. This is going to help you massively, and uh, it's going to save you a lot of time. Uh, you know, instead of actually manually training your characters through stages, you're going to be able to just use these items, and they're going to instantly boost up your levels. Now, Zenny. Go down here to the Hercule stage. Zenny is used to awaken characters, it's used to train characters, it's used to do a bunch of stuff. So, running out of Zenny is really bad. You never want to run into Zenny. I would recommend doing this stage every single day. I believe this is also a once a day stage. Yes, it is. It says once a day only. So make sure you're doing this once a day. It takes less than a minute to do. <laughs> it's really, really easy. Uh, and then orbs. So we'll get to this potential system later, but these orbs are super important. They're going to power up your characters immensely. Make sure you're doing these every single day as well. And those are the three main things I would say to do every day. This is a new uh, stage that came out during the fifth anniversary with uh, skill orbs. It's basically an expansion of the potential system, which we'll talk about later. But that's pretty much a overview of what you should be doing right now. So, like I said, the steps that I would say to do are, you know, potentially reroll your account if you think that, you know, let's say you're a Gogeta fanboy and you really just want to have a, an account based around Gogeta, then I would say reroll until you get this Gogeta, and vice versa for Vegito. These are, you know, their top five units in the game. So if you start out your account with a top five unit in the game, you're going to be in a really good spot to, you know, make your make your life a lot easier in terms of actually building up your account. Then I would say farm quest mode, get dragon stones, get a bunch of resources, farm story events for free to play units, try and build up your account in order to get into this tab, which is where you're going to be, you know, spending a lot of your time, um, you know, defeating all these. Dokkan, I mean, there's a lot. Look, look, look at this. <laughs> defeating all these Dokkan events to build up your account even more. And so you can get into the end game content and then the resource tab is over here that you can use to basically fuel all of your efforts to level up and power up your characters. So that said, that's pretty much uh, going to conclude this section of what you should be doing right now. Let's move on to the unit section of this video. Okay, so the next section we're going to talk about here is basically the what is a unit section. So we're going to go over all the details that you can see basically on every single unit in the game. And I'll explain how all those things work. And uh, it's going to be sort of an introductory mechanic for team building, but team building will be its own section later on. So first we have leader skill. And leader skill is basically um, what the foundation of a team basically is. Because look at this one. So Peppy Gallus, that's a category. And uh, we'll get into categories later as well. But every unit that is in this category, basically a tag if you're if you're affiliated with how that works in Legends, every unit that's a part of that category is going to be receiving this buff. So three key, and then HP attack and defense plus 100%. So if you have this uh, character as a leader, that leader skill will apply. It will only apply if uh, she's the leader of your team. If she's not the leader of your team, that leader skill won't, won't be doing anything. So let's say you want to build a Peppy Gals team. 
you want this launch as your leader of your team um, because she's going to help out a lot with that buff, 100% stats to everything, and three key. So make sure that when you're building a team, you want to utilize the highest possible or the best possible leader skill um, that you can possibly build and make sure that all of the characters in your team are uh, included in that tag or category that they're buffing. Next, we have passive. So the passive is on the next page. So the passive is really going to be different for each unit. Uh, it's really hard to explain what this is. It's pretty much just what they're doing, what their core kit is. So, uh, you know, whether whether they're a support unit, a tanking unit, a damage dealing unit, it's all going to be contained in this passive skill. Next, we have super attack. So each character has a super attack, which you'll be able to launch once you've reached 12 key. Now, if they're an LR, LRs are special, legendary characters. Uh, they will be able to have two separate super attacks. One will be at 12 key, and the other one will be at 18 key. So they'll actually have, if you open up the details tab right here, LR characters will have two super attacks there, because, uh, again, it'll depend on if they have 12 key or 18 key. Normal characters that are not LRs have super attacks at 12 key. And those are a lot more powerful than just normal attacks, so you want to make sure that you're prioritizing ways to get your character's key so that they can perform their super attacks. And each super attack generally has a, an effect on it. This one lowers the attack and defense of the enemy that they attack. So that's good to know there. All right, and then if you can see in the bottom left right here, we have a super attack level. So the way that that works is the super attack level dictates how powerful this character's super attack is. And the way you actually increase the super attack level of a character is you have to feed in or you train this character with the same exact character. So if I have this launch, and I, well, let's just say I pull another launch that's the exact same character as this launch, it's the same exact card. If I train this character with that other character who's an identical copy of this one, her super attack will guaranteed increase by one level. If you have, uh, let's say you have this launch, but then you have another launch who is uh, the same character, but the card is different, they will have a percent chance to increase this one super attack. And there's other cards such as Elder Kai's, which I can show you right now. Um, so let's just go scroll down to Elder Kai. So these Elder Kai's uh, are basically wild cards for super attacks. They will guarantee, this is in the leader skill, guaranteed to super attack to level up by one in training. So if you train that launch that we just looked at, if you train that launch uh, with an Elder Kai, she will guarantee to increase her super attack by one level. That's what that Elder Kai does. So Elder Kai's are very, very... Um, important for increasing the power level of your team. Okay, next we're talking about link skills. Now these are, other than leader skills, these are probably the most important things to consider when team building, but we'll get to team building in a bit, even though I'm covering a lot of it here anyway. Um, link skills basically have their own effects, and the way that link skills work is, let's say Battlefield Diva, for instance. So Battlefield Diva gives key plus two. So in order to activate a link skill, this character has to be next to another character in battle who also has that same exact link. So if you have Launch who has Battlefield Diva in slot one, and you have another character who has Battlefield Diva in slot two, the link will then activate, and both characters will be getting the benefits of that link, because they both have the link. So they'll both be getting key plus two. Flea is, is he key plus one and HP is 30% or below. So as long as you have another character with Flea, and you're both below, and you're, uh, your team is below 30% health, that link will activate. Metamorphosis recovers 5% HP. So if you have two characters who have metamorphosis next to each other, they'll be recovering 10% HP because one is five, the other is five, that's 10. Next we have Berserker. Attack plus 20% when HP is 50% or below. Same thing as the one we just looked at earlier. Uh, Incredible Adventure is just uh, key plus two, which is pretty good. And then Guidance of the Dragon Balls, which is attack plus 20%. So uh, you have two units next to each other who have Guidance of the Dragon Balls link, they'll both be getting 20% extra attack. So Having multiple links um, and having teams that have, you know, e when, e when each character is sharing three, four, five links with each other, that's when you start to have super powerful teams because, you know, they're, they're getting so much additional key, so much additional attack, so much additional defense that they're just going to have such an easier time clearing events. And they're, they're doing way more damage. It's, it's just a lot easier to super attack with them. Their defense is higher. So uh, that's one of the most important things to consider when building a team. Okay, and then next we have active skills. This character does not have an active skill, so I'm actually going to have to exit out of here, and I'm going to go over to STR for now. We're going to take a look at this Gogeta we looked at earlier. Um, so we take a look at... Um, we have to go to transformation. By the way, I don't have this in my notes, but 
for certain characters, they have these things called transformations. And after you fulfill certain conditions, they'll be able to transform into different forms. So this one we could take a look at. This Gogeta is starting at base form, but you can see where it says transform starting from the fourth turn from the start of battle. So once four turns have elapsed, he will then instantly transform into this card. So Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta. Um, his active skill, once he transforms, is the ultimate Kamehameha. And the way that this works is um, basically the character will light up and you'll be able to activate his active skill by pulling up on the card and uh, a powerful effect will occur. And then there's different conditions uh, associated with that and there's different effects associated with that. It's basically like a passive, but you can choose whether or not to activate it or not, which is why it's called an active skill. Um, okay. And then last but not least, we went over this a little bit in the prior section, but basically how do you awaken units? Uh, you, ha you have to make sure that you're doing the Dokkan event correlated with this unit. So again, this Gogeta awakens with these Dokkan medals. So these Dokkan, these Dokkan medals drop from the Dokkan event. So we go to the Dokkan event here, and let's say you play the Super 2 stage. Um, I don't have enough stamina to, have to go in there, but uh, let's say you play the Super 2 stage, and you clear the Super 2 stage. You're going to get 7 medals. So you want to make sure that you're doing these stages enough times to actually accumulate enough medals to Dokkan awaken those characters. And let's just take a, go back and take a look real quick at what that actually means. So a Dokkan awaken, because this character is going to start out as this character right here. So we can just take a look quickly at what his passive is doing. Attack and defense plus 50%, and he's doing a bunch of other stuff. So that's basically what he's starting out with. Now, uh, attack and defense plus 50%. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Dokkan Awaken version of this character. Attack and defense plus 60%, and he's doing a bunch of other stuff as well. Then we take a look at the final version of this character. Attack and defense plus 70%. So they're getting progressively stronger as they're getting Dokkan Awaken. And that's the whole purpose of Dokkan Awakening, is basically to strengthen your characters and um, transform them into more powerful, powerful versions of themselves. So. That's pretty much everything you have to know about what a card does. There's other stuff like potential system like right here, which we'll get to in a separate section because I have a whole section dedicated to the potential system. Uh, same thing with, with skill orbs as well. So uh, that's going to conclude the what is a unit section. Let's go ahead and move on to the gameplay mechanics section. Okay, so here we are in the event and we're going to be talking about basic gameplay mechanics in this section. So it doesn't really take too much knowledge to understand what's going on here. It's a very simple game, actually. Um, a lot of it is just basically understanding how the orb mechanic works in this game, or the key sphere mechanic. Uh, and as you can see, we are using Beerus in the first slot, who is physical. You can tell he's physical by the ring around him is uh, yellow. And there's obviously five typings in the game. There's physical, int, tech, AGL, and uh, STR. And you can see that type wheel in the top right corner. That is showing you basically what what uh, type is super effective against the other type. So physical is super effective against int. Int is super effective against tech. Tech is super effective against AGL. And AGL is super effective against STR. And if you go reverse order, STR is weak against AGL. AGL is weak against tech. Tech is weak against int. And then int is weak against physical. And physical is weak against STR. So... Um, that's basically how everything's working in this game, and the way that you obtain key, because look at Beerus, he's right now, he is at 8 key. And like I mentioned in previous section, in order to uh, super attack, you need to be at 12 key. So if we, for instance, got this one AGL key sphere, his key will go up by 1, and he won't be able to super attack. Uh, something important to note here is that if you get the same type key sphere as the character, so he's physical, so we want to get physical key spheres, he gets double the key. So if we get one key sphere for him, he's going to get two key from that, which will boost him up to 10. That's still not enough to super attack. And there's something else called rainbow key spheres, which we see right here on the right side of the screen. Um, those are basically um, wild card key spheres, which means that they can connect anything next to each other. So. Those two physical key spheres are separated by a rainbow key sphere. So if you click on this physical key sphere, they're going to connect via the rainbow one. Now the rainbow key sphere is only going to give you one key, but those physical key spheres are going to give you two each. So you're getting five key from this. That will be enough to super attack. And if you didn't have those uh, physical ones there, you would just do this because that's four key because the rainbow one is acting as one key and it's connecting those uh, reds next to each other. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on these physical key spheres and um, we're going to let her get this AGL key sphere because she's AGL and that'll give her enough to super attack. And the last thing I want to talk about uh, right here in the section of physical of the, uh, the key sphere mechanic is there's something called bursting. And what bursting means is if we take a look at these STR key spheres, there's two that are next to each other of the same color. So we have two STR key spheres right here. And as you can see, it says burst on the screen. So if we want to get all three of these, we can because they're the same color. 
Uh, so if you have, let's say you have five SDR key spheres all on the bottom row there, and you click this one, you would get all of those STR key spheres because they're all going to be bursting with each other. See how that doesn't work with this green one? Because this, this tech key sphere is not the same color as this one. I mean, it's not the same color as this one. So bursting is very, very um, important to understand. And just one more thing on that is that the rainbow key spheres cannot burst with other rainbow key spheres. Those are solely for connecting other key spheres going vertically up the key field. So. We cannot super attack with this Beerus at the end, unfortunately, so we're just going to get this one. And then we can watch this turn play out, and then we'll head on to the next uh, section here. So we obviously have tight disadvantage here, so this might do a little bit of damage to us, yeah. And as you can see, we have type advantage there. So the arrow was pointing down when we were getting attacked, which means that they're doing less damage because of the typing. Okay, so now let's talk about two different things that are happening here. So the first thing I wanted to talk quickly about are link skills. Now we talked about link skills in the prior section under the what is a unit uh, portion of this video. And link skills, like I was saying, are very, very important because they give you a lot of extra bonuses for characters that share a lot of them together. And two characters that have a very, very good link set with each other are uh, this uh, UI Omen Goku and this uh, Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken Goku. So as you can see, if we move this guy out here, their key is going way down, right? This guy is at six key right now, and this guy's at six key right now. Whereas if you put them next to each other, I mean, this guy is starting out at 12 key, so he's super attacking no matter what happens. And because this guy is an LR, like I was mentioning earlier in this video, LRs can get up to 24 key, and they have two different super attacks. The first one starting at 12 key, and the other one starting at 18 key. We, actually, we can actually take a look at that right here. We go into a super attack details, there's two super attacks there, right? The first one um, says uh, super attack at that yellow portion right here, and then this one super attacks at this red portion right here. So... Link skills are very important. I mean, if we had this guy over here, it would be a lot more difficult to super attack, whereas if we just had him right here. So this is why it's important to keep these two units together in the same rotation. Now, what are rotations? So if we take a look at the wheel at the bottom right, that'll show you your team that you currently have. And in order to keep two characters together on the same rotation at all times, you want to have them in the first and second slot together. So what will happen with Whis, you might be asking. So Whis is in the third slot here, right? So Whis will then be rotating out and will not show up again until three turns from now. So Whis will show up three turns later from now, uh, but in two turns from now, we'll have, we'll have uh, UI Goku and we'll have STR Blue Kaioken Goku here too. So every other turn, you will have this same two characters that are appearing there. And the floater is quote unquote, the third character in the slot is the character that's going to be sort of, you know, switching uh, rotations every single time they appear, which is why they're called the floater. So I want to keep UI Goku and I want to keep blue Kaioken Goku together at all times. So I'm going to always have them be in the first and second slot together. So they're not going to rotate out. So let's go ahead and do this. And we're going to attack with Goku as well. And we'll see what happens here. And in two turns, we will come back and I'll show you exactly what happens with this rotation. Okay, so here we are two turns later, and as you can see, we still have UI Goku and Blue Kaioken Goku on this rotation. So in this case, Beerus is going to be the floater, who's going to rotate off of this rotation onto the next rotation, which is going to take place in three turns from now. So we're gonna go to the other rotation, we're gonna come back to this one, and then the one after that, Beerus is gonna show up in the first slot. Um, and that's basically how it's going to work every single time. Uh, and basically the way that a lot of people end up building their teams is they have uh, a few dedicated support units who are always going to be rotating out, and then they have two rotations that they want to build their team around. Um, and that's mostly based around the fact that they have links that they share with each other. So it's pretty simple once you get the hang of it, but I can understand that it's probably a little bit uh, hard to understand right now if you're brand new to the game. So 
that's pretty much going to conclude this section on the gameplay, the basic gameplay mechanics. I mean, this again, this game is not super complicated. It just takes a little bit to understand what's going on. So, hope you guys understood that pretty well. If not, feel free to ask comments below, and I'll be able to get to them on gameplay mechanics because it's, it's you know, it, again, it's, it's going to take a little bit of practice to understand what, what, what's happening in the game. Uh, maybe jump in yourself and test out some uh, some events to see if uh, you can get the hang of how rotations are. But with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the team building section of this video. Okay, so this is going to be the team building section of this video. Uh, it's going to be, you know, it's not going to be super in depth, but I want to make sure you guys understand the basics of how this is working. And the first thing to really mention here is team cost. Now, on the top right of the team screen, you can see the team cost is 380 out of 1115. Now, the way you increase your team cost is you have to level up in rank. And as you can see, I'm ranked 99, which is actually the highest rank you can get in this game. But um, as you start out your account, your team cost is going to be rather low. So if you have a lot of top tier units that you pulled, you might not be able to use them all on the same team just because their team cost generally is higher, the better the unit is. Because if we take a look at this guy, for example, this guy's an LR, a summonable LR who you pull from a banner. His team cost is 77. And this guy's team cost is 77 as well. Uh, and if you take a look at the two on the or the the one guy on the left in the middle, that guy's cost is 32, which is pretty good uh, because he's a free-to-play unit. Free-to-play units generally have a lower team cost level just to cater more towards uh, newer players or or you know people who don't have enough time to grind rank basically. So that's something you have to be aware of when building teams. And uh, the next thing basically is bleeder skill importance, which I talked about a little bit ago. Um, so let's take a look at what this guy's leader skill is. Uh, this guy's leader skill is Super Saiyan's category key plus four and HP attack and defense plus 130%. Now, category is something I did not touch on in the what is a unit section, but it's important to understand what that is for team building. So we go take a look at this menu over here, which is the last menu, uh, categories. This guy's on five categories, the Goku's family category, movie heroes, pure Saiyans, Super Saiyans, and final trump card. So his leader skill is including all Super Saiyan category units. So all Super Saiyan category units are going to be getting all of these stat buffs. So as him as, with him as the leader, as you can see, he's marked as the leader. The top left slot of a team is the leader. All of the other units are going to be affected by that leader skill. So you have to make sure that all the other all the other units in this team are on the Super Saiyan category. Otherwise, they're not going to be getting a buff from that. Um, and there's something else to note too. Let's look at Gohan's leader skill, for example. So Gohan's leader skill is the Kamehameha category, key plus three. HP plus 130% and attack and defense plus 170%. Or there's a second option. He has two different leader skills basically combined into one. Super AGL type, key plus three and HP attack and defense plus 120%. So for example, if you have this guy as the leader, you want to make sure that all of your units are in the Kamehameha category. But if one of them isn't in the Kamehameha category, they would be getting the super AGL type buff, assuming they were super AGL type. So that gives you a little bit more flexibility in terms of building out this guy's team with him as the leader. Now, friend leaders. This is, um, this is an interesting part here because, you know, we'll go ahead and jump into an event just so I can show you what the friend system actually is here. Um, so let's go ahead and just take this on. We'll scroll down here. This is just going to be for show. I'm not actually going to jump in here. So this list right here is the friend sort of selection screen. And they're all the characters with the green heading saying friend, those are the characters that you have on your friends list. And the way that you set a friend leader is you go to team and you go to team up here and then you click on friend supporter. And the unit, the character that you pick to be your friend supporter, that's who you're seeing once you go back here and into an event. All the characters that you see are the characters that people have picked to be their friend leader. So what's interesting about this is, let's just click on this guy, for example. If you pick this guy, this leader skill is going to apply to your team. So you want to make sure, let's, let's use our example that I just used earlier. Uh, let's go AGL Super. And uh, are there any Spirit Bomb Gokus here? It doesn't look like there are. Let me see if we can just um, filter for him. If not, that's okay. Okay, there aren't. So this Gohan, right? Let's go back to Gohan. So if we pick this Gohan, and we we are using our own Gohan as our leader, your team is going to be getting double 
everything in this leader skill. So Kamehameha category key plus 6, HP plus 260, and attack and defense plus 340%, or AGL type key plus 6, and HP attack and defense plus, plus 240%. So that's why it's super important to be doubling up your leaders. You want your own leader to be a character, and then you want your friend leader to be the same character or a character that's buffing the same category as your leader skill. Um, and then those blue, um, those units that are uh, head in, in um, their, the thing above their head is a, is a blue thing that says guest. Those are people who aren't your friends. So even if you're not friends with people, you can still find pretty good characters to use um, in order to help you. And I think that's something that free to play players or new players can use in order to help them out earlier on. So if you want to Dokkan Awaken a character you just pulled, but you don't have a good enough team to take on the Dokkan event, and you scroll through your list right here, and all of a sudden you see a character who's like super powerful to use, that can help you out a lot um, in terms of clearing those harder events. So I think that's actually really useful. Um, and the last thing I just want to talk about briefly, this isn't going to be too long, but um, a lot of these characters that I have on this team aren't directly going to be like super powerful attacking units, right? So for example, this unit right here, um, he is uh, movie heroes category allies key plus two in attack and defense plus 40% in his passive skill. So although he's not going to be super powerful, he's going to be supporting a lot of the other units on this team that are super powerful. So supporting units are very important for teams like this uh, and for any team really, because if you're not augmenting the damage that your more powerful units are doing, then your team is just going to be subpar most of the time. And uh, there's units that actually change the colors of certain orbs on the, on the, on the field, key spheres on the field. So those guys can make it a lot easier to super attack if you're lacking key. Um, so there's a lot of different options that you can see and utilize in order to build teams in this game. So that's pretty much the basics of team building. Um, that's going to conclude this section. We'll move on to resource management next. All right, so here we are in the resource management section of this guide. And basically, there's a few resources that you have to be mindful of when playing this game. And the two resources I'm talking about are Dragonstones and Gotcha Coins. Uh, so Dragonstones, I think, are by far the most important resource in this game. And those are the stones you see on the top right corner of my screen, 358 stones right now. Uh, those stones are what you use to summon on banners, which is how you get characters. So a lot of the way that you get stones are through um, playing events, which I talked about in the early portion of this video with quests. Uh, that's why I said I think it's most important that newer players grind the quests uh, mode, because this is the best way to obtain dragon stones earlier on uh, in your lifespan of your account. So how to use dragon stones, it's very tough to say. I mean, this is going to be subjective at the end of the day. Like, uh, let's say a banner comes out with, um, I don't know, Super Saiyan Gohan. And he's really not the best character, but he's really cool, and you're a big Gohan fan. That's awesome. I would say summon. Um, even though the character probably isn't the best, and even though um, the banner might not have discounts, might not have special deals on it, it might be worth a summon for you just because you like the character. So I think that's important to consider when um, we go through what I'm, about to, what I'm about to talk about here. If you want your account to be in the best position possible to succeed and to have a powerful account and to be able to clear events like Dokkan events and uh, the end game content like Super Battle Road and uh, the Fighting Legend Goku event and Infinite Dragon Ball history, you want to make sure that you're conserving your stones for banners like this. Because if we take a look at what this banner actually is, um, you do 50 stones for a multi-summon, which means you get 10 units for spending 50 stones. But this banner is special because it says on there, for 400 hours, perform three multi-summons and get one free. Um, most banners do not have that. Most banners are just 5 stones for one character, 50 stones for 10 characters. So you're getting, you know, you spend 150 stones on this banner, you're getting an extra 50 stones for free, basically, in summons. And that's not all, because every multi-summon you do for 50 stones is going to give you 3 tickets for this banner. So you do 3 multi-summons, you spend 150 stones, you get a free multi, and you get 9 extra summons for free on this banner down here for tickets. So you're basically getting an extra 19 summons for spending 150 stones. Whereas if you spend 150 stones on like a normal banner, that's all you'd be getting. You'd just be getting three, three summons, three multi-summons. So that's why I think um, for newer players or players who uh, you know are free to play, if you're conserving your stones and you're dead set on making your account the best possible account that it can be, 
you definitely want to make sure that you're saving the stones for banners with value like this and deals like this because this is going to be the best way to obtain the best characters possible because you're giving yourself a better chance and more chances to summon uh, on the banners. Uh, but like I said earlier, if like a, a new banner comes out and with your favorite character on it, but the banner isn't really that good or the character isn't even that good really, uh, I would just say to summon anyway because at the end of the day, the point of the game is to have fun. Um, my advice, uh, again, is just having fun is the most important thing, but if you do want your account to be the best, that's what I would say. So you want to save for these big celebrations like the anniversary, uh, because they have just simply the, the value is just off the charts, right? So that's what I would say to do for Dragon Stones. Now, gotcha coins. So we take a look at how many gotcha coins I have. I have, I have a lot. Nobody really has as many coins. 4,914 coins. Um, you get one gotcha coin for every five dragon stones that you spend. And what you can actually do with these coins is you can purchase units on the banners with these coins. So we go to the Baba shop here, and we'll talk about Baba points in a second, but we go to the treasure tab, we scroll all the way over here, and we look at red coins. Now there's different colors of coins. There's red coins, which are able to purchase Dokkan Festival exclusive characters, which as the name implies, are characters that are only available via Dokkan Fests. Blue coins are characters that are available basically on like other banners, I would say. Blue coins are kind of like the other, you know, other category. Uh, and then there's gold coins, which aren't available right now uh, currently because there's no legendary banners up. But gold coins are used to purchase LR characters that are not Dokkan Fest exclusives. So red coins, right? Let's take a look at the list of red coin characters that we have here. We have a lot of good characters here, and it takes 500 to buy these guys because these, these guys can Dokkan Awaken all the way into LRs. And then the rest, um, you know, they're varying costs depending on how new or how old the character is. So like these older characters, uh, like Janemba down here, or like Omega, or uh, this tech, uh, Fusion Zamasu, they're older characters, so they're going to be costing a less amount of coins, whereas these uh, newer characters up here are going to be costing more coins. So I think the best way to go about using your gacha coins, now keep in mind you're you're really not going to have too many of these. I would say maybe over the course of a year you're maybe going to have enough to obtain like two characters from this that are good. I would say you want to save up your gacha coins for these 500 costing characters like Gohan, or, you know, maybe LR um, Goku and Vegeta who transform into Vegito, or LR Goku and Vegeta transform into Gogeta. Characters like those, because those characters do not come around a lot. And um, this is a good opportunity if you saved up a lot of coins to be able to purchase them basically for free, right? So uh, that's what I would say about gacha coins. Those are, you know, very coveted resources that take a long time to build up toward. So keep that in mind. And then last but not least, we have Baba points. Now, the Baba shop here, you can buy a bunch of stuff in there. This is like, I don't know, this is about to expire, so I'm going to buy a bunch of stuff here. But you have like Awakening Medals, which I think are probably better for newer players because it saves you from having to grind the Awakening uh, Medal stages, uh, like this Dr. Jerome Medal. Training items are in here. You have support items. A bunch of good stuff is in the Baba shop. So what I would say um, is that newer players aren't really going to obtain a lot of these Baba points early on in their uh, lifespan of their accounts because... In order to obtain Baba points, you have to actually click this button, and then you have to sell things to Baba. So if I had a character I didn't want, I'd be able to go to the Baba shop, I'd be able to click like filter by, SS by SR, and I could maybe sell like this SR Frieza to Baba, and that would give me 500 Baba points. So that's the most common way to obtain Baba points. You can also sell items and stuff like that, but I don't really recommend doing that early on. And I mean, take a look at like this um, Elder Guru, like this, we just sold the one SR for 500 Baba points. This is 420 for three of this guy. So, um, you know, uh, it's it's a good way to get something. Like maybe you check it, maybe maybe you really want, uh, you're really running low on like AGL training items. So maybe you're checking the Baba shop for AGL training items every now and then, and then you're gonna buy one whenever that shows up, that's fine. I wouldn't go crazy with the Baba shop as a newer player though, just because it can really drain you a lot. If you're selling, like if you're constantly selling characters to Baba, uh, that you could be using otherwise to help you clear modes. I'd say that's a pretty bad idea, but um, again, if there's something you want and you can pinpoint it, I would say definitely that's a good use of the Baba Shop. So that's basically how I would say you should manage your resources in this game. Let's go ahead and move on to the hidden potential system section of this guide. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the hidden potential system of this guide, which is going to be pretty much the final section that I'm going to talk about here. So this is actually a pretty important feature of the game, the hidden potential system. And if we go ahead and go to the team uh, button at the bottom, and there's a button at the bottom right called hidden potential. So if we click on that, it'll take us over to a character's hidden potential grid, basically. So let's unfilter this. And uh, we will go to a character that I don't have fully um, built out. So let's go to, I don't know, maybe this Bardock right here. So this Bardock, right, he has 0% investment. You can see that in the top left. Uh, the way that this works is you use resources called orbs in order to invest in this potential system. So let's just click on this first node right here. This first node is going to give Bardock an extra 30 HP, and it's going to cost me 10 small orbs and 5 medium orbs for AGL. And um, you can see your orb count here in orbs held. You can see how many orbs you have. This is why I recommended earlier on, make sure you're grinding the orb stage every day because that's really the main way you obtain orbs in this game other than, you know, login bonuses and stuff like that. So this is a very powerful system because if we go ahead and take a look down here at like these, these bigger uh, nodes like this one, for example. This one is going to let you choose. You can either choose between additional attack, which gives you a chance of performing an additional attack, which is like insane, or critical. And this basically has a chance of doubling your damage that you deal on that attack and bypassing the defense of the enemy. So there's a lot of different ways that the potential system can help you out. And the main, you can see on the top, there's like those uh, the, the icons for the additional uh, effects that your character has. The first one on the left is additional attack, which, which we just talked about. Uh, the middle one on the top is critical. The one on the top right is dodge. So your character has actually has a chance to dodge an attack, which completely negates everything. Bottom left is um, same as, let me just actually take a look at it. Type attack boost, that's what it's called. So what that means is if this Bardock, because this Bardock's AGL, is attacking a STR unit, he's going to be super effective against them, and that um, attack boost, uh, type attack boost, uh, ability is going to make that super effective damage deal more damage and then the opposite is true for that middle one in the in the bottom the bottom which is the guarding one so you, let's say this bardock gets attacked by a strength unit he's going to receive less damage because it's it's uh, not very effective against um, an agl unit uh, that one on the right this one right here is um, super attack boost so it's going to just increase the damage of a super attacks and then this one is Recovery, which uh, if you get the same type of orbs on the field, so let's say this Bardock's AGL, he gets AGL orbs, you're actually going to recover a certain amount of health by getting the same type of orbs. This is going to boost how much HP you recover with those orbs. So there's some requirements to actually unlock this mode in the game. And those two requirements are you have to be rank 50, which is this number up here, and you have to clear stage two of an epic showdown on Z hard. So we can actually go go ahead and take a look at what that stage is real quick. It's very easy. I'm sure most of you guys can clear it within your first like day or two of playing this game. Um, I think it's under growth. Yeah, here, time for an epic showdown. So Z hard is going to be uh, this one on this 10 stamina stage right here. So. If you guys are able to clear that and you're rank 50, then this will unlock for you and you can start using the hidden potential system. So what does it take to actually use this system? So let's just take a look at this guy, for example. So this guy was a, um, a collaboration unique unit uh, that I got a long time ago. And as you can see, there's lock icons in the top right. So what that means is that some paths over here are locked by this. Use an identical character to unlock a potential route for this character. So a lot of people call this the dupe system, and this is why. Because you need dupes of the character to unlock these potential routes. So if you don't have dupes, you can only unlock 55% of the character's potential, which is going to power them up a decent amount, but it's not, you know, it's not 100%. And um, the term, I'm sure you guys have heard the term rainbow before. Rainbow just means 100% in the, in the potential system because that star on the character turns rainbow. So basically, if you have a dupe of a character, uh, the strategy that most people use is you want to go bottom right path first because the bottom right path is containing all, like, look how many, look at these, like, those star um, nodes right there. That's going to give you a lot of extra critical, a lot of extra additional, which are the two best um, two best stats to take for a potential system. 
and the most stats that you're going to get from the nodes themselves are actually here right now as well because like look at like this one right here is like 500 strength or fight sorry not strength 500 attack and up here you want to go for your second route so you first you want to go bottom right then you want to go top left then you want to go top right and then bottom left so keep that in mind if you let's say you summon for gogeta and you pull Gogeta, and then you pull a dupe of Gogeta. The first dupe is going to go bottom right to unlock this path, because this is the most powerful path down here. Then let's say you pull another dupe of Gogeta. You want to invest that in the top left path to unlock that path. And then once you've done that, you can actually start using gold skill orbs. Now, skill orbs are something that's been introduced in the game just a few days ago, uh, you know, when the 5th anniversary released, because it's, it's a part of the 5th anniversary. Um, skill orbs, there's three kinds. There's bronze, silver, and gold. Basically, just gives you extra stats. The silver and gold skill orbs are going to be able to give you extra critical, extra additional, stuff like that. And the way you unlock bronze is you have to have the character to a UR status. So unlock them in the, in the hidden potential system. That'll automatically open. Silver, you have to get them to super attack level 10. And then gold, you have to unlock two potential routes. As you can see, this guy's gold skill orb slot is locked. It says, um, yeah, by unlocking two of the character's hidden potential routes. So that's basically all you have to know for the potential system. It's... A little bit confusing at first, I know for sure. It's uh, probably one of the more confusing things of this game. But uh, you'll get used to it as you continue playing the game and stuff. But uh, that's going to do it for the Hidden Potential System section of this guide. Uh, we're going to do one final section, which is basically helpful resources. Alright, well, this is going to be the last section of this video. Uh, I'm just going to briefly mention two helpful resources that you guys can use in order to help uh, expand your knowledge of this game. Or if you have questions, you can ask. Uh, people over there and that is the Dokkan subreddit which I will leave a link to in the description below and the Dokkan wiki which basically has compiled every possible thing in this game onto a website and uh, if you have any question at all you can look up cards on there you can look up events on there you can look up features so if you have questions about the hidden potential system I'm sure you can type in hidden potential system in there and a whole bunch of articles will pop up for you to um, search on same thing with the subreddit. If you have a question, you can ask people on the subreddit. They're pretty um, friendly and helpful when it comes to answering people's questions over there who are new to the game. So uh, I will leave a link to both of those uh, resources in the description below. And uh, that is going to pretty much wrap up this beginner's guide. If there's anything I missed, please let me know in the comments down below. I'll do my best to read the comments and answer questions people have. Uh, a little bit longer than I actually thought this would go on for, but uh, there's a lot to talk about here because this game is... Uh, can be daunting for new players, especially when you haven't really played a gacha game before. But I appreciate everybody who took the time to listen to this uh, video. And I hope you guys enjoyed. See you all in the next one.